Fighting vs. Lomachenko for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world is upon us. Finally here and ready. Both guys trim and ready. Both made weight. No problems. Here we go, man. It's the big moment now. Some fireworks at the uh, at the weigh-in. Uh, you know, I, I waited to make this video. I waited till after the weigh-in because I wanted to get my final thoughts after the weigh-in. Uh, we saw some fireworks with Devin Haney shoving Lomachenko. I think you know everybody's taking uh, a lot, trying to take a lot out of this. I I tend to not take too much out of uh, weigh-in theatrics. Uh, I know that people are always looking for something. Uh, obviously, it's a discussion point, which is why I waited for the weigh-in to make this video. But um, I honestly think I, I, a piece of me wonders if, if sometimes um, Devin Haney feels like he's in competition to sell as much as, say, uh, Jamonta Davis. Because so many people talk about Jamonta Davis, and obviously he sells a lot. He's a star and whatnot. Honestly, I don't know if this is um, just something in his head or if it's something that, you know, he... he, he I don't want to. I don't want to say insecurity, but you know, when you're the undisputed lightweight champion, I think that's all that should matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, different guys are gonna sell. I mean, let's face it, Jake Paul sells more than everybody. You know, is, is any real? Is any of the or any of the major championship level fighters gonna get insecure about that? Ultimately, you gotta be comfortable in your own skin with your with your accomplishments. Um, so I I think that Haney maybe was trying to sell um a little bit here at the at at, at the weigh in. Uh, with that shove to Lomachenko, because I think, you know, throughout the whole promotion, you know, there's obviously been trash talk, you know, more so on the Haney side and, and all this other stuff, and then people saying, okay, yo, maybe it was uh, just nerves from Haney, I don't really buy that at this point, you know, I, if, if if you've been waiting four years for the fight, like Haney says, he's been waiting and all this stuff, I don't I don't really think it's it's so much nerves, I, I, I tend to think that maybe he's trying to, he's trying to sell you know, let's face it, Lomachenko's not a big trash talker. English is not his first language, so you don't get that. You don't get that animated vibe from him. Plus, a lot of Eastern Euros, you know, they kind of, they're kind of a little bit cold emotionally. So, you don't get a lot of that. I think um, Haney maybe was trying to create some final heat for people to discuss, people to talk about, and maybe even to sell a little bit more, you know? I think this, I think honestly, if you're a real boxing fan, this fight sells itself. You know, it's a great fight, uh, uh, undisputed lightweight title. Everything's on the line here. Uh, it's the one that I've been looking forward to more so than even I was for Javante and, and Ryan Garcia. And you know what? Possibly, probably, Javante's gonna, and Dave, Ryan Garcia is probably gonna sell more. But ultimately, you know, you're only 24 years old if you're Devin Haney. And, and you, and if you plan to, you know, be a, a big star, you're gonna just let it come little by little. I think all accomplishments ultimately make you a star. And, uh, if Haney's able to win this fight tomorrow, it would be the, you know, the biggest accomplishment of his career. And I think solidify him as a, a top level fighter, you know, uh, a lot of people, and I myself, you know, felt that he's been a little bit beneficial with, uh, some you know smart matchmaking um probably has the weakest resume of all the uh top guys despite having the light the undisputed lightweight title you know it just all happened to be that way uh it fell into his lap with the Cambozos fight once Lomachenko had to turn it down due to the war but nonetheless dude you're still the undisputed lightweight champion you're still in a major fight um all that selling stuff you know you do it during the the promotion but I think at this point you know, I if, if I don't think Haney should be thinking about how much the fight sells. Honestly, you can discuss that afterwards. You can discuss that way before. Um, and again, this is just me hypothesizing. I think that's why he shoved Lomachenko today. I don't think it had anything to do with trying to get anybody anybody's mind or uh, uh, doing all that. I think it's you know he's he's thinking about sales, thinking like a businessman, and um, and you know just uh, uh, overall, you know maybe a little bit you know when you're a young fighter, maybe a little bit worried about what people think, you know. So, um, you know, you're trying to sell so that, you know, people will, you know, will look at you more as a, as a ticket seller that Javante Davis is. Ultimately, you know, I, I do think that Javante is the biggest star in the weight class, but I, 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 you know, ultimately he doesn't have any of the titles. And that's, that, that means something, dude. That means something. The fact that you got the young speed lightweight title still means something, you know? And, um, well, we'll see tomorrow. As far as the breakdown of the fight, uh, my breakdown is this. Uh, and obviously, people know I've been picking Lomachenko to win this fight. But I think, you know, you have to keep in mind the the overall versatility of Haney's athleticism. You know, what can Haney do? Obviously, we know he's an athletic guy. I feel like we've got to see Haney do more than we've seen him do with that athleticism. You know, uh, he's a guy who controls from medium to long range. Uh, he's physically bigger, probably the biggest, physically biggest guy Lomachenko has ever been in the ring with, you know, although Richard Comey is a pretty big lightweight. Uh, but I think uh, when you combine Lomach uh, Haney's size with athleticism, maybe it's a little bit more of a proposition. Also, Haney's younger, um, you know, a bit more confident, undefeated, all that stuff kind of plays in, plays a factor. But 
Um, I haven't seen Haney really be able to do a lot of work on the inside. And I think keeping Lomachenko at bay with, with just the jab, despite Haney having a very good jab, keeping Lomachenko at bay with just the jab and the occasional hard right hand, which you have to really disguise if you're even going to land it anyway. Um, I, I don't know if that's going to be enough. And I think Lomachenko is going to make his way inside, you know, a good amount of time, especially as the fight progresses. He's going to find his way inside more and more and more. And I think that's why Haney and Team Haney have been stressing so much about uh, quote unquote dirty tactics by Lomachenko on the inside. Lomachenko doesn't really have a reputation for being dirty on the inside, but I think Team Haney figures that they put the onus on Lomachenko's work inside as opposed to the onus being on Haney's. The fact that Haney holds a lot on the inside, the referee won't really be looking so much at Haney holding and he'll be more so uh, warning Lomachenko for trying to break the holds and the methods he may use to, to break the holds. Um, smart, you know, gamesmanship, but I think Haney overplayed that hand a little bit. I think they talked about it so much to the point where they kind of showed their cards that they are, that, 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 that is what they're worried about, uh, is Lomachenko's ability on the inside. The fact that Haney's a bigger guy, um, usually would come into play, but I, Haney's not a physical guy, you know, so I don't know if, if Haney starts to try to fight a physical fight, if that's going outside of his normal self, and maybe he's not as effective doing that, you know, I think you always got to live and die with the, with what you do best, and Haney does best, what he does, what Haney does best is box at medium to long range, uh, behind an educated left hand, uh, if he tries to make the fight, if he tries to, too hard to make the fight too physical, you know, he can wear himself out, he can also make some mistakes that he, because it's just, just a fight that he's not used, used to fighting, you know, uh, even though he's a bigger guy, I don't think you just randomly just start fighting a physical fight uh, when you've been your best not fighting physical fights, you know? Um, I'll give you an example. When I won the WBA welterweight title against uh, Vyacheslav Tinchenko, he was a very big welterweight. He was six feet tall, uh, you know, good-sized welterweight. Um, and I always had trouble when I, once I moved up to welterweight with guys who were physical and big because, you know, I wasn't a natural welterweight, so the guys gave me trouble. You guys, you guys saw the Sean Porter fight. He was a natural big guy. You know, it gave me a lot of trouble. Even the physicality of some of these bigger guys gave me trouble, but Sanchenko, despite being bigger, had never really fought a physical type of fight, and the fight, the physical play of the fight never came into play because he was a, a technical fighter, so it was technique versus technique, and my technique won the title, but I'm bringing up this example, not to compare styles or anything, but just to compare you know, the methodology, Haney's best method to winning is always his boxing. And that fight, Sinchenko's best method to winning had always been his boxing as well. He wasn't a physical guy, so he never, the fight never got physical. Haney, I don't expect Haney to try to make it physical if he's going to stick to what he does best. He may try to make it physical, but how effective is Haney going to be if he tries to make it physical when that's not really something he's ever done before? You know, I don't believe in you trying new things in a, all of a sudden out of nowhere in a fight of this magnitude. You know, you usually want to do things that you know you do well and you know you've, you've, you know, you've got a reputation and you know you're comfortable doing well. Um, with Lomachenko, if he gets inside, I mean, which I expect him to as the fight progresses more and more. Um, we've seen situations where when guys weren't able to control Lomachenko on the outside, he was at, he was very, very effective on the inside, and he starts to kind of assault you. Um, even the second half of the Jermaine Ortiz fight where, you know, people are complaining about the way he looked. He looked very good once he got inside. The second half of the fight, he started giving him problems. To, the Teofimo Lopez fight, the second half of the fight got very, very difficult for Teofimo Lopez as Loma was trying to put combinations together. He started to put combinations together. He does a lot of damage when he gets inside. He puts combinations together very well. He mixes them up to the head and body. He's deceptive in the way he enters and exits and also finds the angle in the sidesteps. Um, again, these are just things that I just feel like Haney, despite having a very good jab, is going to need more than just a very good jab and, 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 and a little bit more deceptiveness and also maybe some, even some power to respect, to force Lomachenko to respect him. Otherwise, um, I think it's going to get bad. Um, I think Lomachenko has been very, very underestimated by um, a lot of opinion uh, pieces going into this fight. I think people overlook the. I think people are overestimating his perform uh, or underestimating him because of the performance with Jermaine Ortiz. But um, what's not being discussed in Muff, in my opinion, is is the very weak opposition Haney has had up up throughout this this point in his career, even post injury, um, and post surgery, Lomachenko. Uh, post loss to Tofimo Lopez Lomachenko has continued to choose to fight better opposition than Haney has. You know, um, he fought Nakatani, he fought um, Comey. Those guys are better fighters at the point at which he fought them than were Gamboa and Linares at the point in time when Haney fought them. When Haney fought Gamboa and Linares, they were absolutely shot to bits. It's not even close to what they were in their original state. So, I mean, you got a name, but are you really preparing yourself for this level? George Cambosos was champion. Where we can't judge a lot, but obviously Cambosos, we can see his limitations. Um, he had a good night with Tofima Lopez, so you got to give him credit for that. 
But ultimately, he showed his limitations in the two fight with Haney. And he'd shown his limitations, honestly, even before the Dolphin Lopez fight, which is why he was like a 13 to 1 on the dog going into Lopez fight, you know? So, so, um, and then, uh, uh, Lomachenko continued to fight better opposition by fighting Jermaine Ortiz, you know? Again, Haney could have fought all these guys, uh, but he chose to fight lesser opposition. Um, so it, I, I still question how effective he's going to be at this level. Not because I don't think he's good enough, but I just, you know, I haven't seen it. And I haven't seen some of the, I haven't seen the qualities and the attributes that I need. Haney, I need to see Haney having in order to be successful here. On the inside, he needs to show some things that I don't think I've ever seen him show. I mean, he, yeah, he's okay. He's never had to show them against the level of opposition he's fought, but I mean, he's going to have to show them in this fight. And I think if he had them, he would have shown them in other fights despite not having had to show them just because a complete fighter goes to all his repertoire at a certain point, uh, by, uh, in certain points in different fights, you know, and, and Haney's never shown that part of the repertoire. Um, I'm curious to see what Haney's uh, game plan is going to be. You know, obviously, uh, I think from medium to long range, he's very good. He's going to, I think he's going to use that extended left hand, which is legal as long as it stays closed. Um, I think Loma is going to have to uh, work his way past it. But again, Loma is not your typical flat footed opponent. How many guys has Haney really fought that were lighter on their feet um, um, and had this, the ability Loma has to close the gap? I mean, pretty much. Haney has fought all kinds of opponents that he's been able to control with the lead hand because he's been quicker on his feet. Um, yes, Lomachenko is a little bit older, so you got to come in, you know, discuss that a little bit. It could come into play, but he's not 40. He's a 35. He's not 40. And, um, it's not that long ago that he was looking very, very, very good. You know, there's a lot of things you can bring into play with the Jermaine Ortiz fight. You know, it's an ex-sparring partner, so they know each other very, very well. Um, Loma has, you know, again, the layoff, uh, all this other stuff, you know, and, uh, just dealing with stuff back at home with, uh, Ukraine, you know. I'm not going to tell you he was fighting, shooting machine guns in the war, but still you're dealing with stuff. Lomachenko has business ventures there. He's got family there. It's still stuff that plays on your mind and keeps you away from your main focus. I think at this point, though, all the focus is there. Um, regardless of my thoughts on the weigh-in push, I'd say it's a, it's a talking point. Uh, tomorrow, uh, all the uh, talk is over, it's, it's, you know, and the fight happens. I think it's going to be about an 8-4 fight for Lomachenko. Um, I think uh, Lomachenko wins this fight and probably probably moves on to a Shakur Stevens fight, Stevenson fight in the fourth, uh, where I think Shakur probably takes uh, the undisputed type, lightweight title from Loma. Uh, but before you get there, let's see how tomorrow ends up. I think this is going to be Haney's last fight at 135, where at 140 there'll be a lot of other options uh, with a lot of very good fighters. So you know we'll get to see the 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 uh, maturation process of Devin Haney because he's only 24 years old, so I expect him to be around for a while. Um, Again, ultimately, if, if Haney's going to win this fight, he's going to have to do things that I haven't seen him. And people, even the people that are picking Haney to win, they haven't been able to explain to me how Haney's going to win this fight. You know, he's bigger and he's going to use his jab. I mean, that's really basic. How is he going to use a jab against the southpaw style, very specific southpaw style of Lomachenko? How's he going to use his, the physicality against the very, uh, very specific style Lomachenko has? Lomachenko is also is a southpaw, which negates a lot of jabs. Lomachenko also is a, a, a very, creative inside fighter uh, who finds a lot of different angles which can complicate the matter when you're looking to hold on the inside like like Haney tends to do how is how is that going to play how's that going to evolve I haven't found one single person that picked Haney in the fight that has been able to explain the the X's and O's of how Haney exactly is going to win the fight they just think he's going to win the fight because he's black you know that, that's been like that's been sort of the opinion that I've gotten from most people picking uh, uh, Lomachenko. I hate to bring race into it, but, but dude, I mean, I, I constantly get berated whenever I don't pick a black guy to win a fight. It's kind of, it's kind of actually laughable at this point. But in this case, uh, I see Lomachenko winning the fight, and uh, it's because I feel like Lomachenko is the more complete fighter, uh, and I still think he has enough left in the tank. Let me know what you guys think. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, well, I guess it's today now. It's late, late into Saturday night, or late into Friday night, but, uh, I'm Polly Malinaji. This is Polly TV. The undisputed lightweight title fight is upon us. Mm -hmm.